Hello everyone, South Coast Fishing Adventure. You got to start it off with some of Manjamup's finest. Sh how do you say that? Chateau. Chateau. Chateau Dune Jerome. Syrah 2017. If you like your red wine, I think this is what, $36? $35. $36 online per bottle delivered inclusive. Including of delivery. And it is one of the finest reds you'll ever have. Let's come over here. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Got him. Thanks, Pete. So, while we're pouring this, we're going to give you a bit of a rundown on the boat setup, I think. So, before this boat, we had, or I, we had, my family had a Baron Outrider. It was a fiberglass boat, 19 foot, and it was a good boat. Quite a quite a good angle on the dead rise on the hull, but just that little bit too sh too short that it would never reach the crest of the next um, chop, and you would you would fall in the hole a lot, and it would bang a lot because of that. And even though it did have quite a sharp dead rise, you would go forward and back, forward and back, and and slam a lot because of that. This is only a little bit longer. This is a 610, but obviously with the Genesis, it's a true. You get a bit more than what you pay for in terms of your, your length, so you don't get as much of falling in that hole, but you do get some. The reason that I went with the 610 was because I need the boat to stay light enough to beach launch. I do love doing a fair bit of beach launching, and if I went to that sort of six and a half plus, especially with Genesis, like I say, being that bit longer than for their size, uh, it would just get that bit too much trouble without a trailer launching, and I don't have a tractor at the moment. <laughs> so. That's why I went with the Genesis. Pretty good hull, I'm pretty happy with it, can't lie. Um, dead rise is not as sharp as some of the other alleys, but it's still a good hull. Anything else I need to say about the hull? Extra fuel? Yeah. <clears throat> so the other thing, when I did buy it, uh, that I needed to change, they come with a, this is a 2009, I think it is, and it came with about 150 or 60 litres of fuel. And I wanted to do some oil emissions, stay overnight, things like that. So I just needed to have a fair bit more fuel than that. So took the floor up and put two new tanks in there, as big as you could you could fit without taking out the kill tank. And they are a total of 440 litres of fuel. Which, when I did do that, uh, if you think about when you're driving along, without that extra fuel, it, it rode quite quite straight without any trim tabs of any means. As soon as I put that fuel in, that's a lot of weight that shifts side to side if you're not perfectly level. So if you're going into any chop or even on the river, which is flat, but the wind's coming not dead straight, your fuel will go to one side and then all your weight goes to one side. That's quite a lot of weight and it will tilt your boat onto the side and you'll slam a lot. It'll be very uncomfortable. No matter how much you move your weight around, you'll still have plenty of dramas there. So that's when I installed the zip way because I did a lot of research looked at all the types of trim tabs and there's another video on those but the trim tabs are probably the best investment I've made on this boat because zip wakes the zip wake sorry because there's no more moving stuff around it's just set and forget it's their auto and the, the auto function on them is perfect you always run dead straight you land on your keel which means you can add an extra five knots on you never slam because the keel is landing in the water it's never banging on the water and hitting and stopping and I know that other trim tabs do have an auto function, but being on boats with those, they're just, they don't act quick enough and they, because they don't intercept and they just do minor, like it's too slow to react by the time it, the hydraulics push it all the way down, it's already gone the other way and it, it never quite stabilizes. The interceptors is just boom, as soon as they're in, it doesn't even get a chance to land. It's already corrected it somehow before it even happens. So starting at the back of the boat, we had a two stroke on it when I bought it. Uh, it was a Johnson 150 or something like that. Um, two strokes, you know, just too unreliable for me. I needed a four stroke for, for the stuff we're doing. So we upgraded to the Yamaha 200. And this is the fly-by-wire. It's been great, love it. Took a little bit to get used to, but now I love it. The big blue things. So. <clears throat> On the back, they come with scuppers. I don't love scuppers because they do leak and to open and close them is not simple. You can't leave them open because then water comes in 
but it does drain the water off the deck and then you can't leave them closed because when you do get splashes or the kill tank overflows it just ends up being water on the deck that splashes around then you have to lean over get them open they can be a prick to open water's everywhere just not ideal i wanted one that's more of a one-way valve you can get the ping pong ball ones that has a ping pong ball in them but as soon as you get a bit of weed or crap in there they stop working and they clog up and i have no shortage of crap on the boat that'll get stuck in there these we cut off the scuppers and we welded on some um what is a four inch yep four inch pipe alley and and cable tied on this lay flat which is four inch as well and it has to be the flexible type like this so basically the water when it's on the deck when you drive along it'll straighten out and open up and the water will come flying out and then once you stop or go into reverse it can't the water just gets trapped in here and never makes its way up there and it might fill up a little bit of this tube but it just the, the, the fact of it being flat it will kink and it will trap the water it will never have a chance to get right up in there and then as you drive just get shot out as well as any other water that you had on the deck so these will be the first time i've actually used them tomorrow we'll let you know how they go but really excited the one bloke that does have these with this exact same setup um, reckons they're the best thing he ever did to his bike so looking forward to seeing how that goes these are the zip wakes we were talking about that's the interceptor that comes out just goes straight down like that that's why they react so quick and the auto function in there is so good the gyro has left right forward back and acceleration so it just knows exactly what your boat needs to do to stay level and it does it before it happens all right transducers so we'll get to the sounders in a minute but on the back this is the main transducer that i use it's a 265 not 75 simrad mr low high not low high wide i did have that originally on there it's getting a bit of play in that. i did have that originally on there but the problem with the high wide is that the cone angle on the high is too wide so that might sound like a good thing and you can pick up more ground but the compromise with that is that when you're at speed even with it at a good good position that will pick up well at speed the cone is too diluted by too much ground that when you drive over the small pinnacles which is what i like to fish the most they won't you won't see them they're, they're too hard to show up because there's not enough echo as a proportion of that cone size that will give the sounder the will tell the sounder to show that as a pixel on the screen once you go to the low high the high is a lot narrower and yeah, you won't get over, drive over as many pinnacles, but the ones that you do will show up as a pixel on the screen because as a proportion of the whole cone that's on the floor, they make up more of that percentage and they will show up as a pixel. Then you can mark it, drive back around it, see if it's worth fishing and go from there. So low high, how have I set it up? Well, there's one trick with transducers, which I might do a separate video of, but pretty much bury it as deep as you can Put a spray guard on and slightly forward and the uh, spray guard the spray guard is pretty industrial it's from bunnings but um that just stops the water going onto the motor because when you do have them buried uh you will get a lot of spray people i know that the mr instructions and a lot of people say that you want it just skimming on the water that's great if you don't need to read at speed but if you need to read at speed it needs to be buried we've also got a plate welded on here just so that you can tinker with the adjustment move left right up down uh, without having to do holes in your boats and it's just got some threaded um, slots in there for it cool how's the light on your face mate beautiful <laughs> <laughs> all right the blues just come kind of amazing so this is the three in one. This was like my backup transducer. I was using this. I heard good things about them. It's just a three in one. Um, doesn't really, even though it's buried in a good spot, I've tried a lot of different spots with it. Just doesn't read too well at speed. It doesn't have the oomph, it doesn't have the one kilowatt to just shoot through all of the bubbles and stuff that you need to when you're driving to be able to pick up that return. It's just not enough power in the water. That's why one kilowatt will always be a lot better in that situation. So the one thing that you can do to compromise that is to reduce the small amount of bubbles. So that's why we went to glue 
this one onto it. So basically, this is a wood sandwich that we uh, sort of roughly chamfered to make it the right shape. Chamfered forwards and to the side so that it ends up being flat and also tapered forward so that as the water comes off the hull, it's not got a sharp edge that it hits and creates bubbles. So this reads very clean out this side, but to the left, the 3D on it doesn't read great. So I've some got some work to do. Some work to do on this one still, but definitely a lot better than straight off the back of the hull. This here is just a little drink tap when you get thirsty. <laughs> now that's the pickup for the um, deck wash. A great line snagger too. Is, yeah, and it's hit a lot of cray pots as you can see. And that's why it looks like that.